Now for families whose loved ones go missing, the unknown is a pain that lasts a lifetime. But new technology is helping give those families closure as local investigators and coroner's offices are finding ways to close the oldest of cold cases. KCAL's Joy Benedict shows us how. They are the faces of the lost, the final images etched in time of a loved one who disappears. And for those left behind, it is a face they never forget. Here's Linda right before she went missing. It was October 6, 1977, the day Doug Durnell's sister, 27-year-old Linda LeBeau, disappeared. I could tell by the way that my sister and I got along and how close we were that Something was not right. Years turned into decades and into lifetimes, but there was no trace of LeBeau or if she'd ever come home. But Durnell says his mother never gave up. She always had hope. She wouldn't even move from her uh, house and she never changed her phone number just in case my sister would call. She never did. But last year, Durnell got a knock on his door in Northern California. The Sheriff's Department from El Dorado County came up and uh, told me that they had found my sister's uh, body and she was pronounced dead. I said, you know, she's been missing for about 47 years. It turns out bones belonging to LeBeau were found back in 1986 down an embankment along the Ortega Highway in Riverside County. At the time, it was determined she was shot in the head, but no one knew who she was. This record is from June 10th. 1923. And that is more common than many realize, as the Riverside County Coroner's Office is holding on to the remains of more than 200 people that they have yet to identify. Old dusty books dating back to the late 1800s tell the stories of crime and mystery. Someone is someone's child, someone is someone's family member, and for us to give them their name back to them is our driving force. Sergeant Nancy Reese is working hard to do just that. As a coroner, sergeant in Riverside County. She is working to provide a name for every Jane and John Doe on the books. Most of the remains buried in unmarked graves all over the county. I was able to get close to half a million dollars over the next three years to exhume some of these decedents, uh, submit for DNA, and just, just funds in general to do a lot of things that uh, requires a lot of funds. So far, her department has exhumed three bodies as she's focusing on cases before DNA was ever heard of or collected, as new technology is now allowing her to get answers that were once unavailable. They're able to bore a hole into here, into like the thickest aspect of the femur, and they're able to still get DNA even with how old this is. They've been carefully collecting bones and sending them off for DNA analysis. One of the most effective with old bones is Othram in Texas. We built a process called forensic gray genome sequencing that can use that intractable evidence, evidence from all those cases that couldn't have gotten justice. Dr. Kristen Middleman is a biochemist and molecular biologist. When we first started, we worked only on cold cases that were previously intractable. Law enforcement was not sure they even believed this technology worked. But in the last four years, they've solved hundreds of cases dating back to 1881. They take degraded and partial remains and use technology to fill in the gaps to create a DNA sequence that can then be matched to law enforcement databases. Often you just find a, a, a fraction of a skull or a fraction of someone's remains that may have floated up in the water. Every time we're able to get to that answer, that, that person's answer, there's someone there that's looking for them. Someone like Doug Durnell. Back in my days, this would have been science fiction. Now it's reality. He admits he was skeptical 10 years ago when he was asked to first submit a DNA sample, but now he's glad he did it. Incredible. Uh, we're talking about almost uh, 47, 48 years of uh, mystery that has finally been resolved. It boggles my mind. I just wish that my mom and dad were still alive to hear that news, to let them have some peace. To their dying day, they always wanted to know. And he hopes his sister's story gives other families peace as he encourages anyone with a loved one missing to provide a DNA sample too. For the answers they are waiting for about the faces they remember may not be so far out of reach. 
Joy Benedict, KCAL News.